Um, if I was going to do this problem, the first thing I could look at, the first problem I could go ahead and look at was now to be multiplying these, right? I can use my product of logarithms, so I'd say ln of um, x times x minus 1 equals 1, right? And I could obviously distribute that. ln of x squared minus, one, or, uh, minus x equals 1. Now, what am I going to do from here? Well, also, I can now go ahead and convert this now to um, exponential. So again, e to the 1 equals x squared minus x. Now again, we still need to solve for our x. So to solve for x, we need to set this equal to 0. So therefore, I have 0 equals x squared minus x minus e. All right? Ooh. That's a 6. I don't know why I wrote my e wrong. Thank you. OK. So now I have x squared minus x minus e. So to do a problem like this, well, we always want to look to factoring, right? But can we factor this e? Remember, it's an irrational number. So this can be factorable? No. So if we can't factor something, you can use the quadratic formula. So remember, quadratic formula x equals opposite of b plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4 times a times c. All right? All over 2a. Thank you. X, uh, a x squared plus b x plus c. Right? Or when we have an equation. So now I'm going to simply plug these in here. x equals opposite of b, which is 1, plus or minus? 1. Negative 1 squared. Thank you, thank you, thank you. b squared, which is negative 1 squared minus 4 times 1 times c, which is a negative e. Why do I keep on writing my e's as a 6? Divided by 2 times a, which is 1. All right? So again, from the peanut gallery, thank you. x equals 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 squared minus, you can say this is going to be negative 4 times e is just going to be a positive 4e divided by 2. Okay. Now, um, what we can do is obviously you can, you guys can, we can just go and simplify this, approximate this as much as possible. All right. So if I do, um, you know, we could just leave this as a simplified form. But one thing we want to do is we want to be able to check our answers because so far we've always come up with one answer. Yes. Yeah. Uh, because it's negative e in the equation, negative e. So I put it in there. So now. What if I go and look at it? Let's just go and approximate the answer. 1 plus uh, 4e, all right? And then take the square root of that. And then let's, uh, let's do 1 minus that answer, and then divide by 2. So therefore, I have x approximately equals negative 1.223. I'm just going to use this answer real quick. And then the other way, if you're now to use plus, so I'd have 1 plus 5 times e plus 1 divided by 2. So x equals approximately 7.796. Now remember, we're approximating e. right? e is an irrational number, so you're not going to have an exact number. That's why I'm writing this approximation. However, there's one last thing, guys. We have two values, right? We have a positive and a negative, right? So we want to make sure when we're looking at this that both of these are going to work, that we're not going to have any extraneous solutions. So what we can do is also plug in these values back into here just to make sure they're going to work. So if I had ln of negative 1.223 plus ln of negative 1.223 minus 1, which would just be 0.3. Just want to make sure that's a value. And what you see is there's no real answers, right? Because you can, can you take the ln of a negative number? Can you take the ln of a negative number? Let's think about that. ln, or anyways, if I was going to plug this in, ln of negative 1.223. Is that even possible? Think about it. Let's just pretend ln, what, let's pretend equals x. 
So therefore, E raised to what number equals negative 1.223? Is that possible to have a negative, is it possible to take an E number, raise it to a power and equal negative? No. no. So therefore, this negative number is what we call an extraneous solution. All right? So it's not going to be in the solution set. Yes? Yeah, I added one right there and then divided by 2. So what I did is I did 4 times e. Maybe I did it wrong. I did 4 times e plus 1, right? Oh, maybe I didn't take the square root of that. Square root of that answer and then plus 1. Thank you. I did that wrong. Divided by 2. I didn't take the square root. So it should have been 2.223, right? Is that what you got? Sorry. 2.223. I forgot to take the square root when I did my calculations. But what I want you guys to understand is this answer, this negative 1.233, when you plug it back into your equation, how do I get the negative? OK, again, I'm like, again, I'm approximating. So I do 4 times e, e the irrational number that I have in my calculator, plus 1. Take the square root of that value, which was in here was approximately 11.873. Took the square root. I got 3.4457 dot, dot, dot. Then I did 1 minus that answer, and I get negative 2 point, negative 2.4457. Divided that by 2, I get negative 1.223. Again, this is approximation. But it doesn't need to be exact for you guys to understand that when this is negative, when I plug this back into my equation, right? You guys remember this. Um, if I said solve and I say 5x equals 10, you divide by 5, divide by 5, x equals 2. You can plug 2 back into the equation and determine if that makes it true or not, right? Yes? So if I find this value, negative 1.223, and I plug it back into my equation, I understand that it's going to be extraneous. It's not part of it because you can't have, you can't take the natural logarithm of a negative number. So when you're telling me your solution set, you're going to give me these values, and you say, this is extraneous. All right? It's not a part of the solution set. So only the negative one that changes? Only the, yes. All right? So you guys are going to have to be aware.